This is the last and final video on the Naparima build. Um, I tried to finish everything in the last video, but I just never got everything finished. So this cleans up all the little ends, uh, makes a few corrections, um, particularly to the case. Um, so let's get right into it. The last thing we had to do was to build the benches. When it comes to making very fine cuts, there's nothing as delicate as the pre -arc, um, for making these cuts. The only negative um, to using these very thin blades is they can bend and so you may get a variation in the thickness. Um, so in a sense you need to push the piece through very slowly to let the, let the blade do the work rather than force the piece through. The wood chosen to make these slats um, has to be a hardwood with the grain running in the right direction. There's a whole video on making these benches so I'm not going to repeat that. I did make one change which was instead of using those little wire um, spacers I ended up using paper sp spacers which really work fantastic. This required that we do the base of the bench first, um, do all the bases, and then flip them over and do the backs. Um, it sim simply wasn't possible to do it any other way because the spacers kept flopping out. And so I got a higher consistency in the spacing throughout the benches. Although you've seen me use the airbrush on lots of stuff dealing with this model, um, I had purchased a whole bunch of spray bombs and I had found a perfect color, charcoal, um, to put the benches in. So I used what I had, uh, otherwise it would simply have gone bad on the bench and it really gave me the perfect color that I wanted. I did have an inquiry or two about how I made up the side moldings for the case. This is the Proxon Shaper, which is really a miniature router table and it's the ideal um, tool to make very fine moldings. Um, I recommend it highly, although it is lightweight and you can't rough it up or push it too much. I know I said I was just going to stick the two sides and leave the front and back free, but after I had stuck it, I found that when I went to lift it, because you're going to lift the case, whether they like it or not, on these two ends, um, it wasn't stuck enough on this side. So I bumped it up and increased the amount of glue, and uh, that may give me some problems later on, but I thought that was the only way to safeguard the, um, the case. The other thing you may or may not have noticed, just turn that, that the top is a piece of glass that just pops in and all my cases are made that way that allows me if I want to do some simple maintenance instead of having to lift the entire case off I simply take the top piece of the glass off do the maintenance and put it back down there's a risk that it could fall out but that risk is mine and the top piece of glass is relatively inexpensive well, one of the problems that we have when we are um, researching history is a lack of detailed information. So in a sense there's a responsibility on all of us who make historical objects um, to try and document what we're doing, who did it, how we did it, in some way shape or form so when we're long gone um, history won't have such a great chance or opportunity to get it wrong. So I've started this probably about three models ago of inscribing on the baseboard of the model the key information. In this case, this is the SS Naparima, 1905-26, built by me in 2020 from original plans from the National Maritime Museum and the scale drawings produced by John Otway and the scale of 1 in 48. Those are the key things that will steer people to the data somewhere in the world. So to do this, I simply printed this out on a printer, stuck it down with some diluted um, PVA, um, probably about 70% diluted, and then we're going to carve it out using the turbo carver.
you're not going to get laser quality finish um, because you're doing it by hand and the turbo carver does have a tendency if you hit a piece of grain it'll run off but I was very happy and remember this is under the model when it was all completed um, I simply rubbed the paper down with some steel wool and it came all off um, with no problem I also used a dark pencil um, to darken letters a little bit and then put some epoxy on it um, sanded it and refinished and really was very happy with how it came out in the end I tried to film the drama of putting this on um, but I didn't press the button properly her final resting place may she last beyond her years So all little ropes were tied and everything was ready, just the benches to put on. And before I did that, I had to thoroughly clean the model because once the bench is gone, it'll be very difficult um, to clean the model. And then of course, we're gonna take her and put her in the case. Um, I used PVA glue um, to stick it onto the, um, onto the deck. Um, I know I'm sticking glue onto a finished surface because uh, we had rub on poly there but um, I don't think that's really an issue it's really just to keep the benches from moving around there's nothing structural about it um, so I think this is perfectly acceptable this glue is the easiest glue to clean up with a paintbrush and some water and a little bit of patience and you get a perfect finish. We are making up some 3 inch ropes um, and we use a simple method. I'll just go through this quickly. You take your measured rope, whatever the, the thickness of the rope is, put it through a piece of plastic and I have a little piece of balsa here. Oops. And we just stick it in the balsa. There's a little hole, so we stick it in the hole. And pin it down so it doesn't move. And then all we do is wrap it on itself. We're using uh, diluted um, PVA, probably about 50% diluted. Um, really the best way to make sure the rope doesn't unravel. And just leave it to dry for half an hour to an hour and cut it off and put it wherever you want to put it. The life rings were secured with some um, white um, thread at the top and then um, diluted PVA to keep it in the exact position I wanted up against the post or against the railing. Well, here she is in her final resting place. I'm so glad I found a place for it that my wife Susan didn't object to. In fact, it really put a nice finish to a bar. This used to be an aquarium that didn't work out so well and I think I found a much better um, solution rather than filling it in. So we'll see you in another video sometime in the future. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video and many of the others I do useful.